Hello again, welcome back. I'm Saeed, a DevOps engineer and a certified Kubernetes enthusiast. You can find me right here on this YouTube channel. Follow me on X at Saeed F0 and LinkedIn as Saeed. All of the links will be down below. So question six is about Falco. And here we're given a scenario where it says that there's something suspicious happening with one of the pods running an HTTPD image in this cluster. The Falco service shows frequent alerts that start with a file below a known binary directory open for writing. Identify the rule causing the alert and update it as per the below requirements. The output should basically display this and the alerts to be logged at this location. And it says here, do not update the default rules file directly, rather use Falco rules dot local dot yaml to override. Once the alert has been updated, you may need to wait up to a minute for alerts to be written to the new location. Cool. Nice. So let's start with actually popping open the alerts, and you could do that using the journal CTO hyphen fu Falco. Actually, before we do that, let's see if the Falco service is even running. System CTO status Falco. Yep, it's running. You can see some some alerts here, but for a better scope, I like to use journal CTO fu Falco. These are live live alerts that come in, so that's my preferred avenue of viewing the alerts so here we can see we're looking for that and this is active so yeah we'll leave that running in that terminal and then here we need to go to the location as to where the falco directory is and that's in etsy falco and we need to find out right find out where this rule is defined so we could head over to and just grip hyphen r and then we'll paste that alert in there and it will tell us here that it's sitting right here so in the falco underscore rules so we're going to vi into that falco underscore rules file and again we're going to type that in there and locate that so here it says do not update the default rules file directly rather use the falco rules dot local yaml file to override that's fine so we're just going to copy the rule from its from the top um, let me copy it properly there we go <coughs> and we'll close that so now we're going to open the falco underscore oh, rules local yaml and here you can just write your custom rules and it should it will definitely override it if you've written it correctly so <coughs> here we're being told to output the output should display critical so let's start with that here the priority at the moment is error so we're just gonna critical and then it says file below a known binary directory open for writing okay we've already got that but it's telling us instead of seeing all of these different metrics it would much prefer seeing the user id the file updated and the command so i'm gonna get rid of everything except that so let's just start by getting rid of all of those different flags we're gonna have to look at the falco documentation in a moment and we'll discuss discuss that in a moment just a second so we want to get it right the way down to the t so we'll start with the brackets because we want to display it as is so we start with the variables it wants us to specify some variables and we'll just hit user id and then space file underscore updated let's put an equal sign there actually so obviously <coughs> we'll put its value in there in just a moment 
and then the command cool so now what we need to do is head over to the file core documentation which it doesn't provide us any links with cool just gonna grab that there oh let me get that out of the way and then we'll get it up because i've got two monitors so you wouldn't see this side i'll just bring that into the shot so this is the falco official documentation <coughs> uh, just if i could maybe zoom out maybe or zoom in yeah don't know if it's in the shot i don't think it is but yeah there you go so yeah you want to navigate to and you need to know how to navigate this file um a common problem in the exam is that you don't have your google uh google search engine of course so you're not able to just type in keywords and it lo it you know just pick up on those keywords and give you the relevant page you're looking for you need to actually be able to navigate this document and i mean that goes for kubernetes as well but kubernetes have a very useful search um and so does falco but yeah obviously if you've taken the cks then you would need you would have probably mastered that documentation and be efficient sieving through it but falco is a new one so yeah, I'd advise to maybe look deeper into that. So here we've got Falco and we're looking for the docs and then we're looking through references. From references we want to head down to the rules if we open the rules and then here supported fields for conditions and outputs. This is what we're looking for. Oh not that. Yeah, there you go. This is what we're looking for. If you have the capacity to remember the the entire uh, path, then that's good as well. Cool. So the initial um, flag that we want is the user ID. So we just literally hit user ID, and it should just give us the name that we're going to be using <coughs> or the value we'll use for that and there's a con the convention f the convention for falco is that you need a percentage sign in front of it and then here we've got file updated so we'll do the same thing we'll just search file updated so we see here FD name, FD full name. Uh, if the FD is a file, this field contains the full path. If the FD is a socket, cool. The file name, if the the file name without the path. <coughs> but here we're just told we want the the file that's been updated. So the file name, and we'll just take it as is. And then the command, remember that percentage sign, just ahead of it. Oh, no typos here. Cool. Now we want that. The command is what we're looking for now. So the concatenation of proc name process name and the process args arguments <coughs> believe it is this one although it could also be so the process name is truncated after 16 hex this field is collected from the system okay yeah i'm pretty convinced it's the process command line but it specifically says the command that was run. Okay, process name. First command line argument that is. Mm. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm pretty convinced it's command line. So we'll just take that percentage sign and then we'll just paste it in there just like that. So now when we save that <coughs> and we could close that live log thing that we've been doing a moment ago, what we'll do is we'll restart that file call service and then when we confirm that it's back up, yep, we can now check the logs, the live logs again to see what's changed. So here we've got, you can see critical file below a known binary directory. Critical file below a known binary directory open for writing. And then here we've got user ID is zero. The file updated is hyphen bin hyphen sleep. And then the command used was tar. that and then and then what what we need to do is a second point is log the alerts to this log path or this path so first we need to go into the file called yaml and then scroll down into where the alerting actually happens and then here we can see file output Yep, so file output, right, here is where logging is enabled or disabled, and we'll set that to true, and then we'll just provide it with the log, I mean sorry, the log path, there we go, sweet, so now we could restart that, that file call service again, restart it and then we'll see once it kicks off again just give that a second there we go it's back up cool now we check the log and see if it's actually logging to that path that we specified so if we hit cat, yeah, cat, and then give it that log, there we go, it's logged it, and that is the same time as when it was run. That concludes this question here.